What's up guys? So today we're doing some axles on the Subi. Uh, both my inner axle boots are torn. So I picked some up from Rock Auto. They're like $40 a piece. The OE Subi ones I think are like $450. And um, for what it's worth, I figured I'd just pick up the Rock Auto ones, slap them in there, reboot the OE ones. I will be doing a video on how to reboot your axles. Um, as long as inspecting these axles, I don't find any imperfections. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so your first step is going to be getting the wheel off. And then your second step is going to be to get the 32mm axle nut off. Um, we tried to get it off with a hammer and chisel at first and it didn't really work. So we just took the 32mm socket and a pretty sizable uh, pry bar and you know, came right off. You're gonna want a second person or something to depress the brake while you're doing it, otherwise your rotor is just gonna keep slipping. But... So these are just two 19s. At least with the race lens that we have on this. I know not the best coilover brand, but it's a daily. So you work with what you got. Alright, so once you get your top two bolts out, you should be able to loosen your rotor up enough to give you some room to pull that axle out. These fought us quite a bit. Probably because we live in New York and um, we get a lot of road salt and sand like that. So if you live somewhere as salty as New York, probably not going to have a great time doing this job. But um, if you live somewhere with good climate and you keep your car indoors all the time, it should be much easier for you. Alright, so we put a jack underneath the control arm just so that your rotor and everything doesn't flop down when you go to take these two bolts out. Um, there are other ways of doing this, but we felt that this is going to be the easiest way, at least for us. There's two of us here, so it definitely makes the job go a little easier if you have a friend who can come help you out or, you know, just someone, you know, you know who's mechanically inclined um, just to give you a hand with everything. So we're going to go ahead and tap these two bolts out. And then um, should be able to wiggle this around enough so that you can get your axle out. Like I said, I'm not going to mark the camber bolt just because I'm not going to set it back to where it was before. down just a little lower. I don't want to separate it from your coil over and it should just flop down like that. That should leave you enough room to be able to get your axle out. Okay, so after you fight with your axle to separate from your hub for about an hour and a half, um, you'll come to this conclusion where you have your axle nice and loose on this side, separated from the hub. We had to use a bunch of different tools just because it got stuck, so we had to use a flat punch, we had to use one of these guys. This was a big help towards the end, we kind of just pulled it out, really. I really recommend you get the right tools before doing this job, we kind of just sent it. But now, once you get it to this point, you should be able to just eat the axle right out. Just like that. And you separate your axle like I did on the other side. on that side of the axle, or what was axle, and there's the dip fluid that I was waiting for. Once you see the dip fluid, that probably means that it's loose enough for you to just grab by hand and take out. So, now we're going to have to put the new axle in. 
Alright, so when you're putting your new axle in, make sure that it goes all the way in. You'll kind of feel the teeth line up and then you want to put the old axle nut on your new axle. Give it a couple taps in to make sure it's all the way in. Check to make sure it's flush. And then once you're all done with that, you can start trying to get your new axle into your hub. Alright, so once you cut your steering wheel straight, it's going to be a little easier to get this popped in. You're going to want to make sure that the teeth are lined up. And it should kind of just pop into place. And we're on. I'm just going to loosely put this on just so it doesn't pop back out. Leave a little wiggle room in there. And we're going to line all this stuff back up. And then we're going to tighten up that 32 again. And uh, yeah, you should be all set with your new axle. Don't forget, you want to bend this in. We'll show you that again. Send it. All right, so Joey's on the brakes again. I'm just going to tighten this up. To be honest with you, I don't know the torque specs. I probably should. But, um, yeah, we're just going to send it on pretty tight until you don't really feel it move anymore. Yeah, I don't think that will come off. And now we're just going to tap that in. Joe, you can come on out. Sure. One more tap for good luck. That, in theory, shouldn't go anywhere. We got the axle nut tight. Um, when you're taking your OE axle nut off, or your old axle nut off the first time, um, I recommend just throwing your lug nuts back on there, just so you don't accidentally miss. If your axle does get stuck in there, you might end up hitting one of the lugs on accident with a hammer like I did twice. And we're gonna go re-thread those in a couple minutes. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing me get a little fired up at the SUBI and uh, learned a thing or two and hopefully you can see what I did wrong and see, you know, don't do that <laughs> and kind of take um, some of the things that I did do right and apply that when you're doing it yourself. I'm by no means a professional mechanic, I just do this for fun and um, you know, this is my first Subaru. so. I'm kind of still learning how everything goes with it. And uh, I definitely learned a lot from doing this. Hopefully you learned a lot from the video. Please like, subscribe, um, leave a comment with any questions, or if you want to criticize me <laughs> on a couple of the mess ups, feel free. I'm always open to uh, new suggestions. Thanks for watching.